Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday morning. I had to remember what day it is. Tuesday morning. We are in February already, which is hard to believe, but uh, good to be together this morning. The uh, magic weather window here in the top secret remote location says it's a much better day today than it was yesterday, at least where I'm at. So uh, I'll show you more of that here before the week is out. But it is a good morning. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Toby and Ron and Wendy. What's up, Short Stuff? And Eha, good morning. And Robin, good morning. Zachary, good morning. Chuck, good morning to you. Miss uh, Wendy uh, Mama Mosa up in Thunder Bay, good morning to you. Uh, let's see, Matt and Judy are on. Good to see you guys on this morning. Cheers to all of you that are coffeeing up and uh, getting ready for some Jesus time this morning. So let's jump in. We're going to jump into uh, Nehemiah 7, 1 through 3. And so this is going to be Nehemiah 7, 1 through 3, just the very beginning of chapter 7. Um, so I'm going to pray. We'll jump into the text and then I'll do the giveaway for Freebie Friday that I forgot to do yesterday. I'll do that at the end before we jump off of here and get rolling. So, uh, all right, we've got Sonia and Misty and Carol and Kelly. What's up, Kelly? Good morning. Good to see you. Miss Lori, good morning. And uh, all kinds of peeps jumping in here. Angie and Denise. So good morning, everybody. Let's get in here um and it's uh nehemiah 7 1 through 3. you got two ones there fast fingers this morning all right cheryl good morning to you let's pray and let's jump in all right man lord we love you we thank you so much for your word we thank you for the opportunity to dig in and and study and learn and be together this morning god help us to continue to grow and learn and uh, just becoming more and more like your son help us to keep uh gleaning and uh, being taught by you from your word that's alive and at work and able to teach and correct and change and lead. Um, and so just do that with us today. Just pray in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, here we go. What's up, Merritt? Good morning. Randy, good morning. Ingrid, good morning. Good to see you guys jumping on here with us. Let's jump in to this little short chunk at the beginning of, of uh, Nehemiah chapter 7 goes like so. After the wall was finished and I had set up the doors in the gates, the gatekeepers, singers, and Levites were appointed. I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem to my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, uh, the commander of the fortress, for he was a faithful man who feared God more than most. I said to them, do not leave the gates open during the hottest part of the day, and even while the gatekeepers are on duty, have them shut and bar the doors. Appoint the residents of Jerusalem to act as guards, everyone on a regular watch. Some will serve at sentry posts and some in front of their own homes. And I was going to kind of camp out. Yeah, right there for today. Couldn't remember where I was going to stop. So that was it for, t that's it for this morning. This morning, just a little short chunk. And the couple of things that are sticking out in here that I wanted to highlight, um, when you read, depending on the translation you'll read, sometimes you'll see a note in there that talks about the, the gates being open during the hottest part of the day. Some uh, Bibles have a note in there that say uh, other translations mention that the gates are only to be opened during the hottest part of the day. And then other translations say they're supposed to be closed during the hottest part of the day. Uh, it seems to be that the popular scholarly opinion is that the direction was that the the uh, gates were supposed to be closed during the heat of the day and then even when they were closed they were supposed to be barred and and um, locked up tight it, essentially what is speculated is there was a shortage of people in Jerusalem to actually stand guard and watch there wasn't enough people to uh, really defend the city well, and so those gates became their number one line of a de of defense. Uh, just like living in the bad neighborhood, you're going to just always lock your door, um, and the fact that your door is locked is going to just deter some people or give you time to be prepared to defend your home, and so they had the gates locked all the time. The, another story comes out of Rome in about the same time period about 
the idea that during the heat of the day they would nap and uh, a city was attacked with its gates opened during the midday when it was hot and the, the uh, guards at the gate were napping. And so there's some speculation that that was kind of a, a common um, understanding that you would want to make sure that uh, when you napped, the gates were closed, which I guess makes sense. Again, if you live in a rough neighborhood and you're going to sleep, um, maybe shut the door. So just uh, some little, just little nuggets about the gate stuff that's in there. Um, and then the other thing that was really sticking out to me in here, a couple things is the idea that here's Nehemiah. We, it's just this one, it's one of those deals where it's such a huge deal and it's just a quick little sentence. It, it says that, um, so he got finished, he sets up, he says, after the wall was finished, I set up the doors and the gates, the gatekeeper, singers, Levites, and, and then verse two, it just kind of drops this little bomb there like it's no big deal. I gave the responsibility of governing Jerusalem. And it just like, could you imagine in the world that we're in, how uncommon it would be for somebody to get that much popularity, that much authority, that much respect, um, that many people that would follow and listen to a leader and, and look to them for advice and guidance. And, and then when they actually kind of um, accomplish what they sense they were supposed to accomplish, they just give it away. They just hand off the reins to somebody else. They're like, all right, this was my part. Um, it just seems so kind of crazy radical in a cool way to build something up, to follow through with a, the part of the plan that God had called him to, and then to be so casual in writing down hit the memoirs here of like, hey, this is what happened. It finally got to this point, and boom, I'm handing the reins off. And so, it, so he just casually says, hey, I'm giving away authority. Um, it's like a voluntary term limit, if you will, as a leader, which seems to be such an opposite thing that we see in the world around us today. It's like when people feel called to a leadership position, it, they get in that position, and then it seems sort of like maybe when the um, they've accomplished what they set out to do, and but along the way they get a taste of authority and influence and popularity and and the benefits of what comes with leadership and and when the time comes where it would be better for them to hand it off to someone else they don't they just hang on to it right they can't let go um, because of the pride and the ego and all that other stuff gets in there and so it's just kind of interesting that after all that we've learned about Nehemiah and all that's gone on everything he went through to get there all of the battles that were fought the the attempts to take him off track, the enemies that were against him, the issues that he had within the, the, his own people with the nobles, um, taking money from their own people, interest from their own people, it, all the things that he had to internally lead through, all of the projects that he had to lead through, everything that came to pass. And at the end of it, he says, uh, and I gave away uh, the job to govern Jerusalem. And here's the guys I picked. And one of the things that it also is a really cool little nugget from a really short passage here, but there's a really cool nugget in here when it comes to choosing leaders. A, a lot of you are in positions where at different times you get to choose people to lead or you're looking to hire people or you're looking to um, raise people up on volunteer teams. You're looking to um, bring people in as other employees or um, underneath you. Um, and you're also in positions where you have an opportunity to speak into who may be hired in leadership positions in the places that you work. It may be speaking into what do you actually need in a new supervisor or a new boss. And so it's just pretty cool in here is we see Nehemiah kind of maps out a couple of really simple criteria that are top tier, number one things to look for when you're looking to choose leaders. And they're not often the top things on a job search or a leadership search when you're looking for a leader it's uh, can they do the job are they qualified do they have the right skill sets do they have the right experience and while those are important they're not the number one things that Nehemiah mentions he mentions two things that he chose uh, Hananiah uh, or I don't know how to say his name the right way uh, go to your blue letter Bible and hit the pronunciation tool and you can hear him say it and it sounds sweet with an awesome accent but uh, uh, he chose him because he was 
faithful. Some translations use the word integrity. He had integrity. Um, and he feared the Lord. And that's something that I think a lot of times we misunderstand, feared the Lord. We're not talking about he was afraid of the Lord because the God was going to be mean to him or angry to him like a like a abusive father, like a fear of uh, God that way. What that really means is that he had um, respect and honor for God. And he had this healthy sense of awe and wonder about God. And in the way Nehemiah says it is, he feared the law, the Lord more than most men. So in other words, he respected and honored God. He had this awe and wonder about God more than most people he knew. And so it, something stood out to him about this fear of the Lord that he had. And then the word uh, for integrity, or sometimes is translated as faithful, the uh, Hebrew word there is, uh, it looks like Y-A-R-E. It looks like yar, and it's uh, you get a roll your R's. Um, so it's like yare, yare, all right? So yare is uh, to stand, um, uh, no, yare is faithful, true, respectable. And so those are the things you're looking for when you're trying to choose leaders. You're looking for somebody that is um, uh, true, faithful, respectable. In other words, they've got integrity. They're the same person when nobody's looking. Um, and you're looking for somebody that has a healthy uh, reverence and fear of God. And if those two qualities are present, then you move on to the, what other things are we looking for in this person? Uh, do they have the skills, right? Obviously, these guys had the skills. He also mentions that he was a commander of, uh, I think it was, the fortress. And so he, he had the skills, but in addition to the skills, he had the character and the right, um, uh, I don't know, kind of nature and personality, the right makeup in general. So those are some kind of little nuggets in a short little chunk of text here that help us kind of think about what kind of leaders are we choosing, what do we look for in a leader, um, and why are those things uh, top tier important. So um, that's the nugget for today. And then uh, tomorrow, we're actually going to skip ahead and I'm going to have you guys just, uh, I'll post some stuff in here, but read through the genealogy family tree stuff in the rest of chapter seven. And tomorrow we're going to jump ahead to chapter eight. Um, I've gone through uh, several of these already as we've gone through um, Esther and Ezra. And so I want to let you guys just read through these on your own and uh, think about uh, what Nehemiah is trying to unpack there. He's trying to get a good record of everybody that had returned. So read through that on your own, and then we're going to jump into chapter 8 tomorrow. All right, so uh, I did a drawing for the Freebie Friday. For those of you that happen to be new, every Friday uh, there is a post on the Jesus Time Facebook page. I do not go live on Fridays. I post a post that shows up at 7 a.m., you go read the post. There's some instructions there. Everybody that participates and engages in conversations. Um, then uh, on Mondays, I do a drawing and we give away some cool stuff just to spur on and make it fun to participate on Friday. So we had a lot of participation on Friday, tons of comments, a lot of really good comments. If you're looking to dig in and grow and see how other people um, study to kind of glean what people are getting from a passage. It's kind of fun to read commentaries, but it's also fun to read like living commentary, like real people commentary. And that's what Friday is. You can go back and look at that post and read all the way through uh, all the comments in there and you get some insights into what God's showing different people and how they're wrestling with the text and some of the things that show up in there. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, all right, so the drawing for Friday is, uh, it was Lonnie Vickerman, and uh, Lonnie and Marilyn are up in Post Falls, and so we're going to give them to them both because they're always tuned in as a dynamic duo every day. I've known them for lots and lots of years, and their daughter was uh, a volunteer in my youth ministry years and years ago, and I actually did her wedding to her and her husband who met serving in youth ministry. So Lonnie and Marilyn, awesome. Congrats to you. We'll get you on the on the docket and get you guys a couple of Jesus Time mugs and some coffee cards and some goodies mailed out. And uh, you guys can enjoy some uh, Jesus Time coffee cups. So that's the scoop for today. All right, uh, Alice, good morning. 
and good morning, and Judy, and Cheryl, and Rob, and Team Freckles, good morning, Eileen, good morning, Robin Wilson, good morning, Martha, good morning, Donna, and Chris down in Lewiston, or Clarkston, I'm trying to remember which side of the river you're on, Clarkston, I think, good morning, uh, what's up, Barbara, over in the UK, good morning, Karen, good morning, Matt, what's up, Miss Linda, good morning, and other Linda down in Lewiston, good morning to you, Jill, good morning, uh, lots of folks jumped on here. Scott, good morning to you. Jill up in Cedro Woolley, what's up? Amy in Texas, good to see everybody this morning. Hey, I'm gonna pray for us and cut you loose to have an awesome Tuesday. So let's pray. Man, Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your word. And we just pray that you would continue to just encourage us and strengthen us in our faith. Continue to keep um, this text uh, stirring in our mind and our heart today. Um, Lord, just keep teaching us, helping us become more and more like your son. Use the words that we heard today to uh, shape and change and direct our path. I'm just praying in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys have a fabulous Tuesday, and I will see you back here tomorrow morning. Don't forget to read the rest of chapter 7 on your own. We'll start chapter 8 tomorrow. See ya.